getting set up. They can see us now. Right? I know, they can see us. And hear us. We're going to start in a couple minutes. Okay. <laughs> kind of work on your dance moves, Carl. <laughs> Loving all the questions coming in. So many classrooms. We're gonna get started in just a minute. Just a minute. We have classrooms from all over the world. We are so excited that you are here with us today. We have classrooms from all over the world joining in for Computer Science Education Week. And we have some great things to talk through today. This is how do you build an app idea to reality and we are sitting, well, I'm Angela. Hi, by the way. I lead the community at Seesaw. I was a kindergarten teacher for 15 years using Seesaw in my classroom as well. Usually I'm in Minnesota, but I am right now in Seesaw headquarters in California. We'll tell you a little bit more about that as we get going. But I also have a fourth grader and a seventh grader. So shout out to them if they are tuning in. And today we're going to meet Carl. He is one of the co founders of Seesaw. What does that mean? Basically, he had the idea to create Seesaw. We are going to discuss what he did in school to get to this place in his career and his engineering experience. We are also going to learn about the steps to actually build an app and then take time to answer all of your questions. Maybe not all of them in this session because we <laughs> could probably take the entire day of school but we'll try to get through a chunk of them. So we are excited for you to join us. <clears throat> and without further ado, he's, here's Carl. Hi everyone. Um, I'm gonna try and go through the presentation here as quickly as possible so we can save as much time for questions. But uh, I'm Carl, those are my two kids, Lily and Charlie. Charlie's in third grade, Lily's in uh, sixth grade now. Uh, we are in San Francisco, California, which uh, is over there on the map uh, to orient everyone. And in San Francisco, we have some key landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge, which I'm sure you know, we get to drive across this on a pretty regular basis. It's beautiful. And the Seesaw headquarters is located in downtown San Francisco uh, in what they call the financial district in this building on the seventh floor. Uh, and so we are coming to you from a little conference room just outside this space, which <laughs> yep. is our lunch room and team meeting area where we all get together every Monday to talk about what's going on with Seesaw. Um, so to start off, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about how I got into uh, building apps and building products. And really, you know, I say that I've been interested in technology and education from a very early age. Uh, people ask me what was my very first experience with computer programming, and it was on a computer that looked like this. I'm sure to many of you that doesn't even <laughs> look like a computer, looks like a typewriter or something. It uh, plugged into a television set, and the way you loaded uh, programs onto it was with a cassette tape. So it was a long time ago, but I started programming when I was uh, pretty young, um, you know, younger than many of you. Like I was about uh, five years old when I started using a little computer language called Logo. You could give a turtle basic instructions to move around. And I got really excited about it because for me, next slide, uh, it was a way to create. Um, I think some people think of uh, programming or coding as you know, very like sciencey or mathy. And there's, there's some aspects of that, but for me it was, uh, a way to make something, make the computer do something I was excited about. And I wasn't as good at painting and drawing as I was <laughs> at making computers do things. Uh, and so I got really excited about programming as a way to create things. Um, so that's a little bit of my background. From those early days of programming, I went on to study computer science in college and then uh, 
work for a bunch of different companies building products. And so I've seen now over the last 20 years building all sorts of new apps from scratch. And so what we're going to mostly talk about today are the sort of key steps to building an app that we went through when we built the first version of CISA and we still go through every week as we build new CISA features. And before we do that, I'm actually going to ask my colleague Emily. She is watching all the questions coming in and she's going to give a couple shout outs because we have so many classrooms joining in. And before we start going through the steps of building an app, Emily, who should we give some shout outs to? Because I know we have lots of classes listening right now. We have so many friends from all over the country. We have people visiting us from Omaha, Nebraska, Mrs. Good's class, Miss Patrick's fourth and fifth grade class, Miss Daniel's class from El Paso. We have friends all the way in Springfield and third graders from California. And I'm individually sending messages to all of our other friends because we're so appreciative that you're all here. Thanks Wonderful. so much for joining. Yeah, we're excited that you're here. So Carl, let's talk about these steps for building an app. Let's get going. Let's do it. Okay, so we've sort of broken this down into six steps. Uh, think of an idea, make a plan, write some code, test and fix, beta test, and then listen and redesign. We're gonna talk about each one of those in a little bit more detail. So the first step before you build anything is to really think of an idea and try and understand who are you building something for? Well, who does it help? And what problem does it solve? Because if you don't know what problem you're solving, you don't know how to think about a solution. So we always tell everyone here to be really clear about those uh, first two things before you even start uh, you know, your idea process of how to solve that problem. And for a business, it needs to solve more than uh, one person's problem, so lots and lots of people use it. So uh, what problem were we trying to solve by creating Seesaw? Well, you know, there were a couple different problems. Uh, one was that we heard from a lot of teachers that they wanted to use technology in creative ways in the classroom, uh, not just play games or watch videos, uh, but they <laughs> needed uh, a way to sort of collect all that work and organize it and share it. And then on the parent side, you know, I have young kids. I wanted to help uh, support my kids, uh, you know, at home around the dinner table. What do you do in school today? and I wanted to get more information about what they were doing at school. So those were some of the initial problems we set out to solve by creating Seesaw. I'm guessing some kids have been asked that question I by bet, their families. Yes, I'm my, guessing. My, I think so. my kids tell me that it's the worst question ever. <laughs> what did you do in school today? So I try and ask them better questions by right. having some examples of what they did. Exactly. All right, so step two. Yeah, so step two, once you've got a problem and an audience, you can start to make a plan for how you're gonna solve that problem. And a lot of times that doesn't start on the computer. That starts on uh, a piece of paper or a whiteboard. Uh, you can draw some ideas out. You can do research into how other people solve similar problems. You can go out and talk with the people you're trying to solve a problem for and listen, understand their problem better. Um, so you know, when we first started with Seesaw, uh, you know, we actually didn't write any code. We just made some pictures in Photoshop or on a drawing program and put together a set of slides to sort of walk through what it might look like to use Seesaw. You'll see this screen looks probably familiar to something you've <laughs> used, but a much simpler version. And we just showed that to a few teachers and got their yep. feedback. Angela was actually one yep. of the very first teachers we showed this to. Yeah. Um, so we sort of walked through this flow of like, oh, you can take a picture of some work. We had buttons in convenient places for people to, to press and just got their reactions to whether they thought that was useful. Once you've sort of convinced yourself that you've got an audience and a problem and a plan, then you've actually got to start the programming part. Um, we talk about that as writing code and it's basically very specific steps to tell the computer exactly what to do. Unfortunately, computers are kind of dumb. You have to tell them exactly yes. what to do. Yes. And so code is basically a step-by-step -step set of instructions to tell the computer when you what to draw on the screen and what to do when you press a button. So I think the next slide, yeah, has some example of code. This is code in a language called Python. It's one of the languages we use here at Seesaw, mostly uh, on the server side, that uh, tells the computer, sort of in this uh, case in the middle here, how to look up uh, some of the skills that might be associated with a student post. Um, so a lot of times we get asked what coding languages do we use? We use a lot of different ones. So uh, we use 
a language called Objective C to make our iOS apps, so apps for iPhones and iPads. We use a language called Java on the Android platform. We use HTML and JavaScript for our website. Then we use a language called Python to build uh, our servers uh, that sort of store all the Seesaw data and send that back to users. Test and fix, this is a big one. Yeah, so unfortunately, because you have to be so specific when telling a computer what to do, you almost never get it right on the first time. Even the best programmers uh, you know, get it mostly right, but have what we call bugs. Bugs are things that the computer is doing that you didn't intend. And so in every stage of the uh, sort of product development process, we need to do a lot of testing. We put it in front of people inside the company, outside of the company, and we see what uh, works and what doesn't work. And once we've got that to a place where it's mostly working the way we thought it should work, yep. then we do something else which is called beta testing. Beta comes from the Greek letter beta, or it's like basically our version of B. And it means that it's like one step past letter A, one step past alpha, it's mostly working, but it's not really done yet. And we then put something out in front of real users, not to see whether it's working the way we thought it should work, but whether the way we thought it should work is actually right. Sometimes, you know, we make a plan and we build something and we put it in front of people and they're like, eh, I don't know, I, <laughs> I, I thought I would like that, but I don't like that at all. Um, so, for example, in the very first version of Seesaw, we, we knew we needed a way for students to be able to log in to Seesaw. And so we said, I know, I've got it. We will let them type in a, like, a, I think it was a four letter code to log in. And we put that in front of some teachers. Uh, and they were like, you know, I don't know. That seems like not the best way for kids to log in. What if instead you had a QR code that you could scan? I bet some of you sign into Seesaw this yep. way. This was actually an idea from a teacher named Zach. He yep. drew this little picture and sent it to me and said, you know, you could just put a poster on the wall and scan a QR code. And that, uh, that made signing into Seesaw much, much easier. Love it. So we have a couple more steps and then we're gonna get to your question. So step six, listen and redesign meaning we listen to a lot of ideas and feedback from teachers and classrooms just like yours, but what else are we doing? Yeah, so I mean, the thing about building software is that you're never really done. You get a first version out and then you have more ideas for things to add or change. And so we are constantly in the process of iterating. I'm gonna skip this question for now because okay. we wanna to get to the questions that they have for us live. But then the last step is to launch, yeah. right? Yeah, so once once you've got something uh, in a place where you're excited about it, you you know publish it to the app store or make your website live and launch it to the world. And then you start all over again. <laughs> uh, once you've got something launched, uh, you know, you're constantly in the process of making it better. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna get into some live questions Great. because this is the most fun part, right? We wanna totally. hear from them. And shout out to, to the five friends that are uh, sticking inside from recess because they wanna keep watching your webinar, Carl, and your information. So that's, that's exciting. That's impressive. I'm more exciting to I know, research. I know, than recess. Yeah, that's, recess. That's, that, that's big, that's big. <laughs> um, so I have a question that came in before the session. So this is Mr. Muhammad's class in Boston. He teaches sixth through eighth graders. Um, and there is a student wanting to know, how can I create an app and sell it for $1? Uh, great question. Well, you need to go through all these steps yep. and then uh, you can launch an app in the app store and you can decide how much you wanna charge for it. And you can say you wanna charge a dollar for it, or I think it's 99 cents technically. <laughs> and they will handle all the details of collecting that money and putting it in your bank account. Um, so the selling it for a dollar is easy. The hard part is building an app that lots of people want to use. Right, exactly. So we have so many classes. So hi to Miss Cooper, Miss Flagstead, Miss McCormick's class, Miss Triggs class, Miss um, Stevens class is here, Mr. Castellano's class. They're here in California. I know that. Miss um, Waits class and Emily. What questions should we start with? We've got so many coming in. Um, so what should we jump into? First. There were so many great questions, but one question that came up a lot was students wanted to know why you named it Seesaw. Uh, that's a great question. So when before we launched, we needed to come up with a name and we did a bunch of brainstorming inside the company to pick a name. We wanted something that was sort of related to schools 
but not super literal. Um, those literal names can be kind of foreign. So we made a bunch of, uh, we brainstormed a bunch of names. We had Spiral, we had Locker. Spark. Spark. Yeah. Um, but we landed on Seesaw because uh, it felt visual because you see and you saw and a lot, big yeah. part of Seesaw was about uh, communicating visually. And then also had this kind of back and forth idea mm -hmm. that reminded us of going back and forth between school and home. Great, what else, Emily, what's the next question we should jump into? Another question that came in from some third graders, they were wondering what's the best way or some of the best ways that you've seen teachers or students use Seesaw? Wow, okay. Well, <laughs> I think we are excited anytime students or teachers are using Seesaw to create mm -hmm. and to really show their learning in all sorts of different ways. Um, so, you know, we see so many different things, using Seesaw at centers around the classroom, using Seesaw to create beautiful art projects, um, using Seesaw to document a science experiment or share a music performance. Um, there's, you know, as long as you're using Seesaw to create or reflect or share, uh, you're you're doing it right. There's no wrong way to use Seesaw if you're doing those things. That's a good one. I have a question that I'm peeking at right now from Mr. Valenti's class. Um, Keaton wants to know how many beta tests did you do? Wow. It's a, it's a great question. I honestly don't know the number because we're constantly beta testing. Um, even now we have new features that we're beta testing with some users. Uh, one of the things that we can do in Seesaw is turn new features on for some teachers but not others which lets people uh, give us feedback on, on features that are in this beta phase. Like we're done programming, but we're not quite sure if they're right yet. All right, Emily, what, what else should we answer? Another theme that came up a lot was we have a lot of students that are really interested in learning how to code. So they were wondering if you had any advice on some places that they could learn how to code or anything that could really get them started. So we have um, on our website, if your teacher goes to web.seesaw.me backslash Seesaw Coders, and you, they'll get that information in the email that comes after this. We do have some resources at the, at the bottom of that page, but Carl, do you have any recommendations off the top of your head? I mean, there are a lot of different yeah. places to go to learn now, um, but I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, code.org as an mm -hmm. organization that helps make uh, learning to program fun and easy to get started. And then once you've kind of gotten a taste for what it's like, if you like it, there are lots of places to go then to learn more. All right, Emily, what else should we and tackle? This I, question I, I would say. Oh, what, oh hold on, Carl, what question? Oh, you were just on it and yeah, clicked off. See. I'm not sure who it was from now, but somebody asked, why is it important to learn computer science? Oh, yes, yes, um, yes. So here, here's the thing. I think we are living in a world where more and more things, sorry, this is from Megan Miss, Brinks. Yeah, in Miss, Mrs. Brinks Iowa. class. Yep. Um, we're increasingly living in a world where everything has some aspect of computers to it. And I don't think everyone needs to be a programmer. That doesn't have to be, you know, your job if that's not what you want it to be. But I think it's really valuable to have a basic understanding of how computers work because more and more computers are gonna be everywhere. And if you don't understand how computers work, you're just going to be doing what computers tell you to do rather than learning how to tell computers what to do. Which seems a lot more fun to me. All right, Emily, what's next? I would say the question that came up by far the most was how long did it take you to create Seesaw? So from the idea to, I guess, when it went to the app store or when it went to schools. Yeah, so it was about six months from when we first started working on it to our very first version, and that was almost five years ago now. So the first version took only six months, mm -hmm. but the product that you're using today has really been, you know, under development for five years. So that's what I mean when I say, you know, you're never really done. Right. Uh, you know, we've got a team of 20 or so people working every day to make Seesaw better, and that team has grown from, you know, two people to 20 people over the last five years. Uh, we're constantly working on it and listening to, to all of your feedback and suggestions. Um, so this is Miss Flagstaff's class saying, we love Seesaw. Are you gonna build an, another app soon? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're pretty committed to Seesaw for now. I think uh, there's, there's so many ideas and suggestions for additions and improvements that we hear from folks 
that we could keep ourselves busy working on Seesaw for, for years. So we're pretty committed to Seesaw for now. Yeah, we have so many classes. So shout out to Ms. Stevens, Mr. Bjornstedt, Ms. Beltran's class, uh, Ms. Patton's class, Ms. Hart's class, Ms. Michael's class, Ms. Buehling's class, um, Ms. McGuffey's class, so many classes, Ms. Dam's class, um, Ms. Shelf's class. Um, we are so excited that you have spent time with us. And actually, Carl, Carl would love to spend so much time answering questions. He's actually offered to, uh, if you hop on Twitter and you mention Seesaw, he's going to be looking for questions that have the hashtag Carl. And yeah. he's going to respond to questions there. So if you're thinking, oh, we didn't get our question answered, or I want to make sure Carl answers my question, you can get hop on Twitter. Um, let us know. Mention Seesaw and make sure you include hashtag Carl. It's pretty quick, easy hashtag, right? Yeah. Um, and he'll try to respond to some more questions there um, throughout the day to day. But we know you're also really busy with all the things that you need to do at school. So we are so honored that you have spent time with us here today and have joined us. And again, on the screen right now, you are going to see a site for more resources. So if you thought this was interesting and you want to learn more or different ways you can get involved with um, computer science, definitely check that out. And thank you so much for coming today. And we just are really excited to see what you create and learn and share this week. So thanks, everyone. Thanks so much for taking the time. Look forward to more questions. I'll try and get back to as many as I can. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.